Hi, my name is John Paul Raj and I'm on a mission to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. On this video, we're going to talk about how to construct histograms using the TN Spice CX2. So let's get started. So here's the list and spreadsheet page and I've already entered some data about heights of uh, some students, uh, grade 12 students, uh, and uh, they are ungrouped. So just a quick recap from some of the stuff that we discussed in the earlier videos. I'm going to link those videos in the description box. So please make sure that you take a look at them. This is ungrouped data, okay? And if you recall, I said you could right click and uh, right click uh, on any of the cells and, and say summary plot, okay? Uh, let's just quickly see what it actually does if we did not do the summary plot, all right? So if we didn't go via summary plot, uh, just to understand what that summary plot is actually hinting at, all right? So if I just go on uh, uh, control doc and insert a data statistics page, you can see the data is all scattered out. And then if I just click my variable as height, because that's the only variable that is uh, defined there, and I've got them all lined up as uh, a nice uh, dot plot. And then I go to menu and change the plot type to a histogram. And we've seen this before also that it will stack up as histograms. And remember, they are histograms even though they are not connected. Uh, that's because all the data that we have, uh, you know, there's only, I think, one 161, and there may be a couple of 171, 147s. And so basically what's happening is that it's stacking itself automatically choosing a frequency. So yes, this is really, really smart of the calculator that uh, it was a it was a ungrouped data and it's not a frequency distribution, but uh, when we ask for the histogram, it's automatically generating the frequency. So you can see that um, um, each uh, bar of the histogram is computed uh, automatically. So 147 refers to this first bar and uh, you can see that it says three points. And also while we are at that, look at the notation, okay? It's the interval notation. So it means the left end point 147 is included but 148 is not included, that's an open interval. So very much following those notations. So it generates the frequency and it also gives you that correct notation that the left end point of that uh, bar is included. The right end point 148 is not included in the first bar, it's included in the second bar. And obviously you can see each of them is, it says one point, one point, one point because of the frequency, okay? So the frequency automatically is generated. So while we are at it here, we can go to menu and if you want, you can just go to plot, plot properties choose histogram properties and if you want to change the histogram scale from uh, frequency which is which is what uh, currently it's displayed and you can change it to percentage okay so then it shows the percentage all right or you could show density you can go there and frequency uh, histogram properties and you can make the scale as a density and there you go it shows the frequency density there so i'll bring it back to frequency right now uh where is that histogram scale and frequency all right so right now the width of each bin is one, all right? Uh, if I go to menu and plot properties and we take a look at uh, bin settings where you have these two options, equal bin width and variable bin width. Let's take a look at the equal bin width first. And as you can see that the width of each bin or the uh, each column as you were to call it is one and we can adjust what we need there. I can just say I want a two or maybe 10. And the alignment refers to the first, the leftmost, uh, uh, bin, the leftmost uh, reading is at 146 right now. We can even make it zero just to have fun and check what's, what's actually happening. And when I hit enter or okay, it will show me something that I can't see clearly. So there are two ways to do this. You can either drag it, you know, literally click and drag, but that work that will work if you're working on a laptop. Uh, the easiest way to do is uh, you can just go on menu, uh, window zoom and use zoom data. This is you know anything to do with data, data statistics. This is a really cool option I hit, zoom data and it zooms in as I want. And so as you can see that the histogram generated by the calculator is smart enough. The calculator is smart enough to produce equal bins. And even though I said that the first, the leftmost bin must start at zero, that's kind of meaningless. That's kind of stupid because all our data actually starts from 140. Uh, this is 145, so 140 something there. You know, it doesn't start from zero. So when you go and check that uh, bin settings, uh, histogram properties, bin settings and equal bin width, the alignment zero actually means that the leftmost bin must start at, you're telling it must start at zero and that's meaningless, right? Because all our data, if you look at the data, they all started around that 140-ish kind of thing. It was not at zero. So obviously it overreads that kind of thing and it just said, this is where what you're going to get for equal bin width. 
So this is how the calculator will generate a histogram if we did not go via the summary plot route. Okay, remember I said we're just going to add a data statistics page. But if you wanted to do the same thing using a summary plot, okay, and so I have uh, already entered the data on a different problem, a new problem, the same set of data I've just copied it out here. So now if I want to add a summary plot, all right, if I hit control, uh, the right click, uh, or you can do the control menu to get the right click options on your handheld. And I say summary plot, you can either come to summary plot this way, or you can go via menu and uh, data and number eight gives you summary plot. And if you can notice that X list is height, whichever list you're looking at, but it's asking for a summary list and that basically should be the frequency column. So if you if it's not a frequency distribution, this technique might not work, all right? So either you have to create a frequency distribution, uh, meaning you have to find out how many of each data points are there, and then only this technique will work. Uh, because if you just, I, I have no other list right now, so I just have height, uh, the one uh, uh, data list that I have, and I'm just going to say, okay, you know, display on a new page, and I say, okay, and there, as you can see, it creates bars, and it's a very interesting bars again, uh, but notice the difference. I've got height on both axes, on the x-axis and along the y-axis, and that's not what a histogram should be, right? Uh, it's also interesting because, uh, as you can see, that you know, automatically it's calculated how many 147s are there, all right? So in a way, it is still referring to the frequency because look at that. It says 140 uh, for 147, the data item 147 corresponding to 147. That's the first column or the first bar, and it says one uh, 441 there. That's because if you go back to our um, list here you've got that number 147 uh, coming three times. That was the frequency three times there. Can you see that? That's again, three times. I would suggest that this is probably not the best way to draw the histogram. Either create the frequency column and then go via summary plot, or like we did in the early case, just go and insert a data statistics page. And from there you can go and insert the histogram. Now this was all about histograms of equal bin size or equal class intervals as we say sometimes. So here is an example of a question where you're asked to draw a histogram. This is already a worked out example so we can verify our histogram, okay? As you can see in this worked out example, the y-axis is frequency density uh, and each bin uh, size E is different, okay? This is 20, this is 20, this one is 10 and that's 20 and this one is 30, all right? So uh, there we go uh, and it's given as a grouped frequency distribution. You're given the frequency and you're given the groups from 0 to 20 20 to 40, so on and so forth. So how do we draw a histogram of unequal bin size or unequal class interval using the TI Inspires? What are you gonna do? So I'm gonna to switch to the calculator screen and show you how to do this. So here we are on yet another list and spreadsheet page where I've already entered the class intervals as it was given in the question, and I've entered the frequency for each of those intervals. The first thing that you got to do is create another list, okay? So I'm just going to call it um, uh, midpoint, okay? This is the midpoint of each of the class intervals. And I'm just going to say, okay, between zero and 10, uh, 20, the midpoint is going to be 10. Uh, the midpoint for the class interval 20 to 40 is going to be 30. The midpoint of uh, 40 to 50 is going to be 45. The midpoint of the interval uh, 50 to 70 is going to be 60. The midpoint of the interval 70 to 100 is going to be 85. That's the first thing that you got to do. All right, so we've created midpoints and we've for the corresponding class intervals, all right? The next thing you got to do is we'll create something called bounds. Okay, we'll create another list called bounds. And on this bounds column, we are going to enter the uh, left end points of each of the class intervals. Okay, so the left end points, let me just keep both of them. Let me see whether I can do. Okay, that's zero. So let's start from zero. And the next one will be 20. The next one will be 40, uh, 50, so on and so forth, 70. And we need to end at 100. All right, we need to end at 100. So as you can see that one, there'll be in one extra row, but don't worry about it. So we've created midpoints for each of the class intervals. And then we've also created this another column called bounds, which is actually the left end point, but include the last most, uh, the, the right end point of the last class interval. So let me just hit right click and say summary plot is what we're looking for. And X list is not class interval, but it's going to be the midpoint that we've created, okay? And the summary list is not bounds, but it is the frequency. Okay, keep that in mind. And we want it in a new page, of course. And there we go. So we've got our histograms, but it's still not what we want. We want it to be, remember what we said, uh, the unequal bin width. So we're going to go to menu, plot properties, histogram properties, bin settings, and this time variable bin width. And we say we want it from that list which says bounds. And we say hit OK. And just like that, we've got everything that we want. Let me just 
Squish this a little bit here. And just like that, we've got all the bins with different bin size or bin width or class interval, whichever word suits you. This is uh, zero to 20, uh, 20 to 40, 40 to 50. You can see that that is just uh, 10, uh, the class interval size. And this is 50 to 70, again 20. And this is 70 to 100, which has got a class interval. The width is 30. So this is how we create a histogram of unequal bin size. If you found anything useful in this video, do let me know in the comments below. I'm going to see you all in the next video.